Get Warrior Tough, Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. All right, back in the saddle. Dutch is at Coleman on the Twitter. I'm at Warrior Tough PhD. You could use the hashtag Get Warrior Tough. Either of us will answer up on that. Websites get warriortough.com. We're having a serious unplugged discussion. I think it's going pretty good right now, Dutch. If anybody's mm-hmm. mad at us, they can't be mad at us. <laughs> they yeah. got to be mad yeah. at themselves, man. And, and if and if you're mad at, and, and this is where a lot of people get mad at. Anytime, anytime uh, someone is asked to check their belief system, to vet what they believe, to, yeah. to reevaluate themselves. Look, if you if you listen to us, one of two things is going to happen. You're gonna you're gonna go. You're gonna build yourself a process of how you think your thoughts. When that happens, one of two things is going to happen. I need you to get this. You're going to become stronger in your beliefs because you've discovered a lot of information, a lot of facts to support your belief. Yep. So whenever you walk around and someone challenges your beliefs, you're going to be even more prepared than you've ever been in whatever you believe. Now, the second thing that could happen is that you can find out you were completely wrong, but, but you are now much smarter mm. because now whatever is an actual uh, is the actual truth based in fact. What your right. new truth is is going to be based in fact. What your new belief system is is going to be based in fact, and you're going to be smarter. You're going to be a smarter person than you were before. So there's nothing bad about either of those scenarios. You're going to become stronger in your beliefs or you're going to become smarter and all your new truths are going to be based in more facts and more support, more right. information. That's so good. Stronger or smarter? It really is. And you, but why, So let me ask you this, Dutch, because I, why are people so afraid to actually vet their beliefs? Because we run into this all the time. Like, that's the, the biggest fear is, I don't know why, but they're afraid to even look at them. Like, they, you know, what's that, you know, uh, yeah. hear no evil, see no evil, you know, you know from mm-hmm. the planet of the apes. I don't want to know. No, no, no. I, I got the answer. All right. I, I got answers. All right, that's why I come to you. It, you know, the, and, and it's very simple. The best time to teach, the best time to teach individuals is when they're young, right? Yeah. Now, uh, we say, oh, they're like sponges. They absorb all this. They, man, they, you know, you can teach them. If you start teaching a kid languages when they're like three and four years old, man, they, you can teach them four or five languages. They'll learn them all, right? Yeah. And 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 the real reason is because they have so little to unlearn. Uh. And they and they have so little reason to fight you. You know why? Because they haven't lived for fifty years in lies that they have to now defend or now they oh, have to ju- man, justify. Yep. And they have to fight that anger because if I'm fifty and you're telling me I've been living for fifty years completely wrong, yeah. now I gotta fight you because there's no way you're gonna convince me and there's no way gonna I'm gonna accept because all those times I was wrong just comes pouring in. Right. And then like, oh man, I Right, and I've been in vain. I've been living and fighting for that in vain. And, so you have to and, double down, triple down. Yeah, absolutely. No one wants to realize that they've been. So that's why they say you can't teach your old dog new tricks, right? Because there's so much, uh, so many more years that mm. you have to overcome. So many more mistakes that we've lived through. So many more things that we've said that we've done. You got to unlearn so many years. And that anger, if you tell me that I've been believing something that's not true for this long. I'm well, human, we're not man. even telling. Yeah, but we're not even telling. We're just telling you to take a look at it, right? So when here's the the really scary part is that you discover for yourself when you come to yourself and you realize that you've been believing stuff that is mm-hmm. not, you know, helpful. I'll say it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I first started going through that process, Dutch. You know, and and it is it's true when you're younger. So I decided, you know, when I was at a, a younger age that I would be at least coachable, and that's the whole thing that I would not. <laughs> be dogmatic about anything because I saw other people that were just like that with the blinders on dogmatic to a fault even if they even when you know and it would be like my what's that old say my mom would say it. you're cutting off your nose to spite your face mm-hmm. and, and you're literally people do that man and I, I, I don't get it and but that's where all this comes from so we know that with the way the brain's working that areas like self-awareness shut down. When you go down that track and you start judging other people and you're critical and you then you're pas- you add passion to, and then the hate circuit is in full operation, you shut off self-awareness and you become obsessive and happiness is out of your life. There's no laughter, there's no fun, and you're just a curmudgeon, man. 
And, and you know, the funny thing is, so the question I get asked when I'm having these conversations with folks are, if it's a fact that that's the human machine, then Dutch, why don't you behave that way? And I say, I got answers. Mm, please. And this is why I come to you, Dutch. Share us those answers. You are absolutely right that even my human machine behaves that way. But my knowledge of the human machine allows me to circumvent that system. Yeah. You ever see, you ever rewired something and yep. rerouted something? That's on it, it, man. That's what I'm doing. I'm rerouting. I'm rewiring it because I know I can circumvent the system because I know how the system works. And I can stop it right there in its tracks and say, nope. Right. I know that's what my body wants to do. I know that's what my machine wants to do. But I'm going to now reroute it and redirect it on another path that I've created. And we talked about those new paths and how they're Absolutely. created. Absolutely. And so and I love that because this is what we, this is what when and CEO of you, this is what we talk about, where I'm in charge of the boardroom. I don't ever flip on the hate circuit switch. I don't go there. I, in fact, that circuit doesn't even exist for mm-hmm. me anymore, right? Because I've shut it yep. down. I've ripped it apart. That that circuit is it's dead. There's no switch. You couldn't run any current through it because I've, like you said, rewired everything. And I'm not going to... Because it's just... I, I mean, literally, like I said about, you know, doing the burning in effigy. I wouldn't do it because it's literally not in my DNA anymore to hate somebody like that. Mm-hmm. Listen, and I've made... <laughs> All right, we're unplugged, so whatever. I've made my living with a gun for 30 years in some of the worst places on the planet, including in America, as a street cop. Even when I have to use force, it's never out of hate, Dutch. It's out of self-preservation. Mm-hmm. And you, and, you, and you know, and, and I can hear some people saying, well, you know, in the beginning, what happens in the beginning? Because we get this when we're out on the podium. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, how long it takes and, uh, you know, um, how quick should they be able to see results? That, that, that varies from person to person. But yeah. I'll tell you this. In the beginning, we always talk about how the process is, is like when you first learn how to drive that five speed and oh, you're yeah. counting one, two, three, four. And then next thing you know, you're just slapping that thing around. You're not even counting. You, you just whacking that thing around and when you're driving and and slowing down and braking and reverse and so when you if you think about that hate switch that andrew was making reference to that hate switch may come on but guess what your hand's going to come and you're going to cut it off right because you're just beginning this process so that hate switch is still there yeah so you see something you go oh and you bite that bottom lip or you know Ur, and you and then you know what you do a few seconds later you relax because you realize you felt yourself biting that lip and then you hit that switch and you turn it off. So we're not asking anyone to be perfect. We're asking no. people to be more, become more aware. That's it. So when you become more aware that that, that f- switch was flipped, then now you can flip it off. Oh, the flip was switched. Okay, let me walk over here. I me flip it off. Mm-hmm. And now I'll proceed. When you're not aware, that, flip, that switch is flipped up and it stays on and all you know what breaks loose, right? Right, right. So th- this is what the where the awareness comes in. And and again, no one's asking us to be perfect. We're asked to be we're asked to become more aware, to become smarter, to, to gain uh be more informed, like however you want to put it. And that builds this new system uh, based on this new process and we become better as a result. And it's it really and again, it's that simple, not easy, but simple. Mm-hmm. And uh, you said the other day, you said, you know, the process is the process. If you want to cross the street, you still got to go across. You have to walk across the street to get across the street. That's the process. Whether it's, you know, easy or hard is a truth, right? And so, you know, if you're on a busy highway, it could be harder to cross the street than if you're on a country road and you look both ways and see two miles in each direction. That could be easier. But mm-hmm. the process of crossing the street is still the same. You look both ways, you check that it's safe, and then you make your way across. This is the same yep, thing that you you're talking about. If you want to get to the other about. side. Right. <laughs> so if you want to, you can literally shut off the hate switch, but you got to want to. And it's not, it may be, you know, for some of you, that hate circuit, you've been running it so long, it's like, an, it's like the beltway around, you know, Washington, D.C. or Atlanta, and it's a full-on eight-lane wide shutting that down, it might take you a while. It's going to be a lot Mm -hmm. of traffic to reroute. Others of you, you haven't been brought up in that hate cycle, so it may just be like a go-kart track, you know, a dirt track or something. Uh, Have you ever seen the old old light switches that when you 
when you click the right switch down, it's like you're lifting this heavy, like click. You know, it's like really oh, hard yeah, and right. heavy. And yeah. then some of them you just barely touch, touch them and they, them flip, and they up. flip. Yeah, it's you, like that. Gonna, yeah, you're gonna. Have, in the beginning, it may be one of those old, really dug in light switches where you have to put your fingers into it when you click it. And then as you become more and more uh, versed in your process, then you're just barely touching it. And it just flips on and off. Just flip. You're barely touching it. And then it stay at some point it stays off. You don't have to ever touch it again. So, right. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a process to even get a process. <laughs> but you got to make it. You got to make a decision. Right. You know, do you want to remain this way or do you want to become stronger or smarter? Okay, so now I want to talk about this, the, the hysterical reaction to the Paris Accord and Trump withdrawing the Paris Accords and the hysteria from the world leaders. And, and I mean, I was just, I was like, it, now, literally this, hysterical. Hysterical is not hot funny, but <laughs> just like, like you have lost your minds. So we, we, got, a, we got a minute left in this segment, okay. so... Set it up, set it up, so then in the next segment, that we, we can, can just get go to. all out. All right, so I'm going to set it up as in, all right, so I'm looking at, like, people use stuff like saying, this is a traitorous act. These are Americans. This, he's a traitor. It's treason to pull out of the Paris Accords. And then there's other people, world leaders saying, this is an act of war, pulling out of these climate change. Listen, Dutch, the Paris Accords climate change is 100% symbolic. It's 100% symbolic. It's, it is like the kumbaya, everybody have a Coke and a smile. It, listen, do you remember like when we were growing up that, um, and you were younger, so you might not remember, but we had like the We Are the World, and there was the Live Aid and the Farm Aid. Mm -hmm, do you remember absolutely. that? Right, those absolutely. concerts. Those concerts had more impact and were, had, had more teeth to it you know, we are the world, and everybody got in the studio, that was less symbolic, and you couldn't get any more, but that was, like, actually had more teeth to it than the Paris Accords. Like, having all these artists come in and sing we are the world, that was symbolic, but they actually took profits of that and did something with it. <laughs> but Paris Accords is literally pat ourselves on the back because we're saving the planet, yet there's no enforcement, there's no teeth to it, there's no, it's all voluntary. Oh, but by the way, um, the U.S., we want you to pay $2 billion. We're paying $2 billion. So this is where the hysteria came from, is that what Trump said, when we're not coming, we're not playing with this, we're not doing the $2 billion. And we're up on the break, and we'll talk about this. Just relax. Relax, Francis. We'll talk about it when we get back.